Guys, good morning again. It's so good to be with you this uh, second week in a row. You know, there's so many things on my mind, I, and I don't want to spend a lot of time just talking, but you know, this sickness that's going around with this virus, and uh, many, many people are scared. Let's be honest about it, they're just scared. And I really want to encourage each man that's listening to me to take that leadership role and help people walk through this. Uh, we can be very concerned ourselves, but your wives, your children, and your friends are looking at us, how we're handling ourselves during this virus. So we want to be very careful, but life is going on. It's, it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. So when you see someone that you know, that you sense there's there's a great fear in their heart. Spend a little time with them and just talk with them and just love them and encourage them because life has not stopped. We have to be careful with this virus, but life has not stopped. We got to keep moving forward and keep going. So I want to thank Robert again, who's videotaping this and Richard Frizzell, which is just a great gift to all of us. I want to thank Richard for putting together a message for us and, uh, We'll probably be back again next week. Uh, so I, I would hope I could say we'll be back doing our regular Friday morning, but I think we'll probably be back again this time, same time next week. And I may have a little treat for you next week. So take care of yourself and just have a wonderful day. Last week I thought that I finished my series on 1 Corinthians 13, 13, uh, where we were looking at um, faith, hope, and love from that passage. But as I've walked through this week, um, I have realized that we're once again having to deal with this COVID-19 thing. It's invading our lives, guys. And, and I realized that there's actually one more thing that we as Christians need to have, faith, hope, and love. but there's one more thing on that list, that COVID list that we've been talking about. Um, we, we, we know that faith leads to hope and hope leads to love, but where does love lead? Well, the Jews called it Shalom. The Greeks called it Arana, but we call it peace. We have had in the last few weeks, months, an unprecedented outbreak of peace in the world. Um, we, we see that there have been peace treaties all over the place, right and left, being signed um, between Gentiles. Uh, the Serbians and the Kosovans are talking and signing deals. The Jews just signed peace with UAE and Bahrain. Peace between men, a great, great thing. But what is the ultimate peace deal? The peace that happens between God and man. In the law of Moses, God specifically provided something called a peace offering, uh, that after all of the other offerings, the burnt offering, the sin offering, once sin had been dealt with, there was a provision for people who wanted to go another step. It's in Leviticus chapter 3, actually the whole chapter, but I'll just read Leviticus chapter 3 verse 1 so that you can understand the context. And it says there in Leviticus 3.1, And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. Uh, this offering was more, most unlike any of the other offerings. The, the peace offering was different in the sense that God had designed it so that it could be partaken of by those who were giving it. 
Um, the other offerings, the burnt offering, the sin offerings, the animal was to be completely consumed. God took it all as an offering to cover their sins. Peace offering was different. Deuteronomy 12, 17 and 18 says this, Thou mayest not eat in thy gates the tithe of the corn or the wine or the oil or the firstlings of any herd or of thy flock nor of any of thy vows which you have vowed nor any free will offering and that's where peace offering falls under the free will offering or heave offering of thine hand but thou must eat them before the lord thy god in the place which the lord thy god has chosen thou your son thy daughter thy handmaiden thy maidservant, the Levite that is within thy gates, and thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thine hand unto. Let me translate to you what that is. If you have a free will offering, such as a peace offering, God wanted to join you for dinner at his house. We uh, used to have something at Calvary Chapel called Supper for Six. Uh, three couples agreed to meet and have three dinners with each other at each person's house. What was the purpose of Supper for Six? Food? Well, kind of, depend on, depended on who <laughs> you had an opportunity to go eat with. Um, there were some pretty good cooks in our church. But that wasn't the real reason why we did it. We did it because of something that was a lot more important. Fellowship. Part of the reason why God instigated the peace offering was he wanted to have you come over to his house for dinner and fellowship with him. But you got to be at peace with the one that you're going to have fellowship with. It's not very easy to try to Enjoy the company of somebody you're not at peace with. And you got to ask yourself, does not the world lack peace right now? Why is that? Well, yeah, it's kind of hidden away in that peace offering, that, that the details of the peace offering. The first thing that had to happen, you needed to have your sins covered. You needed to deal with the sin that was within your own life. The person needed to deal with that thing that separates man from God, namely sin. Romans 5.12 simply says, wherefore, by, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We know that passage, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that when sin entered the world, guys, really, in essence, a war started. Genesis 3.15 is that classic passage where God says to the woman, I, I will put enmity between thee, speaking of Satan, and the woman, the mother of all men, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, but you shall bruise his heel. That's King, King James, but... The, the idea of bruising the head is actually crushing it. Um, but that's not the word, what I really want to get at there in Genesis 3.15. Uh, Genesis 3.15 has that word right at the very beginning. Did you hear it? I will put enmity. Only occurs five times in the Bible. Three times it's translated enmity. Twice it's translated hatred. The word ava is, can be either translated enmity or hatred. <sighs> can there be peace when em where enmity or hatred exists? What do we need? What is it that we need in order to begin this process of finding peace with God? Well, we need a covering. Uh, we need the blood of the Lamb. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 reads, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by the traditions of your father, but with the precious blood of Christ, 
as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Um, we need that covering. We, we need to be covered by the blood of the lamb. We also need a high priest. Uh, we need somebody to officiate that covering. Hebrews 9, 11, and 12 speaks of this. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not this building, speaking of the temple, neither by the blood of goats and calves, now listen, but of his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, the holy of holies, having obtained eternal redemption for us. When I'm studying this, I came to a realization. Have you, have you ever thought about this? The, the slain lamb of Revelation chapter 5, 6, whose blood was shed for all of us, was the high priest of Hebrews 9, 11, and 12 that obtained the eternal redemption for you and me. And finally, once we have the high priest, we need an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. We need a lawyer. Now, <laughs> it's kind of nice that... Our lawyer, our defense lawyer, happens to be the son of the judge. <laughs> kind of have an end. Um, but we still need someone to ever intercede for us. First John 2, 1 and 2 is that classic passage that speaks about this. My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man does sin now, Let's all raise our hands, and I think that all applies to us. If any man sin, listen, listen, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not only for, uh, and not for ours only, listen, but also the sins of the whole world. Hmm. In a world that has lost its mind in a world that has completely gone insane, off the rocker. <sighs> Fallen men need, need Jesus' free gift of salvation. But do you know what the most tragic thing there is? Just because there is a need doesn't mean there will be those who choose to accept the gift. Literally, to go to hell, they have to walk over the, 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 the free gift of salvation for Christ. So, we need that covering, and if we're Christians, we've accepted that covering. But, but you also need something else there. The second point I want to make is, you kind of want to have it. Did, did you notice that the peace offering is a free will offering? God <clears throat> didn't require this offering of the people of Israel. It had to be their own idea. It had to come from their own heart. <clears throat> we, we know that song, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and, and it's completely true. But the question I have to ask is, whose love do we need? Uh, the world's love is fleeting. It, it comes, it goes. It, it, it's, it's not something that lasts. But whose love does last? Jesus Christ. And it's because of his love we can find his peace. The world wants peace, but it doesn't last. Um... You look around the world, and, and, and I know that there have been all of these peace trees that have been signed over the years. And to be honest with you, the vast majority of them, the ink isn't even dry before they're shooting at each other again. I mean, the classic case in this, guys, happened in, in England, guys, in World War II. Prime Minister of England, Neville Chamberlain, holding up the Munich Agreement, 
and the subsequent Anglo-German declaration he had signed with Adolf Hitler on September 30th, 1938. And he would proclaim, guys, peace, peace for our time. That's him right there. He's holding up the Munich Agreement. We all remember this picture. We all remember what this picture is. And yet, in less than a year, England would be at war with Germany. Man's peace never lasts. Do you know where I find my peace? It's in another document. It's called the Word of God. It's called God's Word. This is my peace treaty with the Lord. Where is our only hope of obtaining peace? We, we, we need to embrace the faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We need to embrace the hope that Jesus has given to each one of us, the fact that he's coming to get us again. And we need to accept Jesus' love in our lives, and it needs to be especially expressed between our, each one of us, brothers and sisters. I need to love you. You need to love me. That's how it works. But as each one of those steps are being fulfilled, what's interesting is, is that while that is going on, we obtain peace with God through Christ. Much better than what, much, much better than this piece of paper that's hanging up on this guy's hand. No, 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 no. That didn't last a year. The peace that God gives us is eternal. So peace with God, what does that look like? I mean, we talk about, oh, we we'll have peace with God. What does it look like? There are a lot, <laughs> a lot of answers to that. And I could talk to you for about 45 hours on it, but by that point in time, my battery would die, and you would have long turned off. So let me narrow it down to the five that I picked. Now, you can pick your own five, and that's fine, too. But these are the five that I picked. Number one, guys, our peace is a promise. The five that I'm talking about are going to be promise, pursuit, part, proliferate, and provision. Number one is our peace is a promise. Why is it that we can have peace at all with God? You know? Jesus kind of promised his disciples, of which I am one. Guys, that includes you and me. He promised his disciple his peace. John 14, 27 reads, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world give do I give to you. Let your heart let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Look at the world. Look at what's going on in the world today. There's rioting in the street, Richard. My peace I give to you. There's political tensions everywhere. Debates where people are yelling at each other. My peace I give unto you. There's COVID, Richard. COVID. It's in our homes. It's in our workplace. It's in our church. My peace I give unto you. You name it, his peace trumps everything. Number three, guys, we can pursue it. We can pursue Peace. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.22 reads this way. Flee also youthful lust. Now listen, here's the key. But pursue, look at the list. Righteousness, faith, love, peace. With those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amazing what you find when you flee sin. And it is interesting that we find that we can pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Number three, guys, we have a peace because we are part of God's family. Titus 1 4, it's the introduction. I know we most kind of breeze over the introduction when we start a new book, but I like looking at this. Titus 1 4 says, To Titus, a true son of our common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
It's interesting that Paul, writing to Titus, didn't say, Oh, Titus, thou righteous man. He could have. He was. He could have said, Oh, Titus, man of God. And he was. No. Paul greeted Titus by saying to Titus, a true son of our common faith. Being a son of the common faith means that Paul could greet Titus with grace, mercy, and peace. You gotta be in the family in order to find God's peace. Number four, as we know God, he proliferates his peace in your life. Proliferate, big word, right? means a rapid multiplication of something. Second Peter 1, 2 says, grace, right off the bat, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of, the, and of Jesus our Lord. As we learn and know who Jesus is, our peace is multiplied. Peace is not a stagnant thing. If your peace is stagnated, you don't have it. You, it's something that is multiplied. It's, it's always being added to you. We need to make sure that our peace is tied to what God is giving us. His grace and his mercy and his love and his peace. And if you don't have peace in your life, guess who moved? And in the midst of the COVID and the chaos and the crisis, we have that provision of hope. We can claim his peace. First, Second Peter 3.14 says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be, diligently, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Second John 3 says, Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. In these tumultuous times, guys, peace can be hard to be peace can be hard to come by if you're in the world. If you're not in the family, if you're not in God's word. The world has a hard time finding peace. They think they find it, but it's fleeting. But in Christ, guys. We are in his peace and have found peace through Jesus Christ. My prayer for you guys as you're watching, as I conclude with this, is this. Don't let Satan take your peace. Don't let Satan try to snatch it away. He can't because God won't let it. But we can feel anxious. We can feel worried. Can I say that we don't need to do that? God is bigger than the world. He's bigger than the COVID. He's bigger than everything else. And if we really and truly believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, why can't we have his peace? in the midst of what we see. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. I thank you for this chance to speak to my brothers out there. Lord, I ask that you would increase their peace. Uh, their, their peace. Uh, we'd ask that it would proliferate throughout the church, throughout Calvary Chapel we stand on. And Lord, I ask that you would go before us, Lord, as this day, Lord, that you would finish your work, that you would bring us home, Lord, but in the time that we are here, that we rest and rely on your peace in the midst of a chaotic world. And we thank you for who you are in your precious name, we pray. Amen.